your heart restarted beating, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Notes of fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Doing another, I guess this is a 101. I think this makes a lot of sense to be a 101. Kind of. Yeah. Well, it's basically, you're not asking the questions. We're teaching you something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, makes more you sense. Could, the question could be how to, blind, how to blind wine. How to do blind. How to, I don't know. How I'm to hang out with nerds. <laughs> <laughs> how to speak English. So, yeah, I think. <laughs> beer pong for white people. <laughs> so, I think this, uh, we thought this would be a fun idea is basically give you the tools that we use on the show to identify what the wines are and have a bit of a guess of what they kind of are yep. and basically we'll do that in two ways which is one we'll actually taste the wine blind together we'll yep. learn how to play the options game as well mm -hmm. and then we'll also uh, go through an options game which we know the answer to that you don't know the answer to yep. and see how much you've learned Fantastic. from the direction from us but, but to start with we'll all play the game uh, blind so me and Anna can kind of me and Anna can kind of <coughs> me and Amanda can kind of show you <laughs> yeah who the fuck is, is Emma Anna Anna Anya <laughs> Anya so yeah me and Amanda will have a little bit like back and forth of kind to go like this is what we think the wine is and why yep. and kind of hopefully give you the tools to be able to take this knowledge onto the show and be able to be better at what you currently are but that being said you've actually gotten so much better over the last yeah. like month or so it's crazy mm. i have gotten very lucky lately which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's really showed you guys up which i'm all about yeah it, hurt, it hurts my feelings sometimes to put it in layman's kind of speak you've been interning and just figuring it out as you go now we're going to upskill you and give you some uh, tools yes absolutely mm. i think there's a chance that you might over like this is the same thing that happened with dad with his whole like, hey, Cabernet is green. Then I tried something. I was just like, ha it's green. It must be Cabernet. It wasn't Cabernet at all. So we'll yeah. see how we go. Anyway. Exactly. Wine well, yeah, let's, uh, so let's pour the wine. Lockie, can you uh, give us the wine, please? Uh, I believe it was, it was, um, it was, wasn't it Len Evans who came yeah. up with this? Well, he, I think. Sure. I think I so yeah, basically it's a game that I think he either championed or came up with to uh, have a bit of a competitive attitude to identifying wines. Um, amongst his friends. So basically we go through trying to guess if it's from the new world or the old world, which is loosely uh, Europe versus the rest of the world. Then you go the country in that particular part of the world, whether it be new or old, mm -hmm. then regions within that country. And then you guess grape variety, vintage. And if you want to be hardcore about it, producer, um, that's pretty next level. Producer's so Producer's mother's maiden name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be able to know that if you know the producer, I mean, if you know what surely. Um, also on a side note. Yeah. Close your eyes and try to swirl your wine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find my wine with my <laughs> eyes closed. That's, actually the, best, that's <laughs> actually the best explanation of what it's like to be me and try and swirl a wine. So are we going to sniff it or are we just tasting straight up? Uh, sniff and taste. Sniff. Yeah. Sniff also, are taste. we three blind mice? Feels like it. Smells red, I think. <laughs> Henry, what do you think it is? Before we say anything. I think it's red. Like, it's got to be red. If what? it's not red, Why? I'm going to look like one of those people that Jimmy Fallon interviews about, like, how many states are there in America? And they're like, 12! <laughs> <laughs> red. I think it's red because it's... Uh, white wine, like, literally just textually is closer to water. Red wine, to me, is generally close... Like, uh, this doesn't feel borderline. This feels red. Yeah. Yep. No, I, we agree with you. Cool. I, I, I'm going to open no, my eyes. Agree. Congrats, it's red. <laughs> um, um, nah, this this feels very very red to me. This feels yeah. Me too. yeah this feels Our like, eyes are open now. Oh, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have beautiful eyelids. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is well, this is definitely red. Yeah, I think for me the the fruit profile was like red yeah. and a little bit purple, for me. Yeah, it smelled it smelled quite bright and kind of mm. sour red yeah. kind of yeah, yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, so. So the first part of options, what's the first thing that we need to start talking about? So a good way to think about it without actually thinking about the questions is we're going to go from a coarse focus down to a fine focus. Okay. We're going to funnel our way down to the final result. So the biggest question we can ask is, is this old world or new world? So do you think this is from, say, France or so do you Spain think this is or from Portugal a... or Italy or... Germany or something like that. A classically producing wine region as opposed to an emerging or younger wine producing country. Like, has there been a king in the country that 
made this wine. Or a queen. It's probably not a bad analogy. I, guess. Um, I, I don't know enough history to really dispute that. <laughs> Please don't get in the comments of being like, well, actually, Archibald. I, my instant reaction to this is that it's old world, actually. Is that what you think? Yes, and I don't know what, like, here's the thing. What we've established is that I am very lucky to win the wine, <laughs> wine, wine games. Like quite often I will guess something and you guys will be like, people who are very knowledgeable will be like, that's obviously not Pinot Grigio. And I've guessed it because it's one of the three white varieties that I know. I know it's not Chardonnay. I know it's not Riesling. So I've gone Pinot Gris and you guys are like, it's not. And then it is because someone's made a weird Pinot Gris. Yeah. Yeah. You I'm know, guessing Old World because it smells like... A bit funky. Kind of. Yeah, it just doesn't smell... Um, uh, bogan. It doesn't... like. It's either Old World or Australian yeah. for me. Like That's honestly yeah. my... I think, I think that speaks of the wine that you've tried. For me, when I, True. When I get this, I think... That it's got a little bit of Brett, a tiny bit. Do you get that? Brett? Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's Brett? Brett Delidio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's uh, <laughs> so it's a it's a yeast strain that throws off kind of like funky barnyard savory flavor like characters. Um, kind of not too dissimilar to the wine we tried recently in one of our um, wine tasting food. Tastings, did. Yeah. yeah, when that kind of smelt a bit VA, a little bit mousy, but it's not that elevated it's not that strong it's just an underlying little breadiness um yeah so is that a calling card of old or new world old, old world particularly or older australian wines and looking at the color it's quite young so it's not an old australian wine so if you've got typically something that is quite a dark red is that usually going to be old world mm -mm. cool great that could be anything color great. we're more looking at the age of the wine which we can get back into a little bit later yep yep um, but yeah, I, I actually agree with you. I think this is an old world wine for sure. Mm. What would be a calling card? So usually if, if I'm saying new world, what are some other countries that aren't Australia that make new world wines? So we've got New Zealand, America, Chile. South Africa, Argentina. New um, Zealand. New Zealand, I think you said that. Um, yeah. So <laughs> colonies. Essentially, yes. yeah. Yeah, it's where grapes have been taken to, essentially, is the best way to look at it. Yeah. Cool. I've said it's old world because I've had a shot. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's because it's a bit spicy, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a bit of something going on that's just like... Oh, I think for me, so you, you identified the bread that is what you, makes you think that it's old world. For me, I think there's a, a really balanced level of acidity and uh, fruit weight that you can't really get in new world countries mm. because a lot of new world countries are quite warm. And a lot of New World countries don't have the ability for uh, grapes that are introduced to actually match the climate perfectly. There is a little bit of imbalance, but this one's perfectly balanced for me. Okay. Yeah, and there's nice complexity as well, like on the nose as well. Like you get that brett, but then you get a little tiny bit of oak and it's really yep. nicely integrated with the fruit, like Noah said. And so I think it's just a really nicely bound package. Okay, it's going to be interesting. Uh, if, if it's not is, old if world. This is, if this is New World, it's going to be quite funny. Lockie, is it an old world wine? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Step one. <laughs> Fantastic. Alrighty. Cool. So what's what's the next step? So we've got Old World down. What's the next step? It's in country. We go, we're going down to country. So We're getting further down the funnel. So we're looking at anywhere in Europe. So we're thinking France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, um, Germany, Germany, Austria. Austria. And then we can get a, that that's kind of largely covers us. And then we get a little bit more niche. Could be Slovenian. Slovenian. <laughs> Could be Hungarian. Instantly, my reaction to this is Georgian. that it's Italian. <laughs> Why is that? because it's kind of spicy and doesn't feel like it would surrender in a world war. <laughs> I agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> this, is the, this is Mussolini. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I agree. It's got this really savory, savory kind of spicy character that really does feel quite Italian. And um, it's a, there's, an, there's an underlying herbaceous note as well. Yeah. And uh, it's a I, bit warm too. It's warm and it and the, the oak use is quite telling. When you say warm, is that referring to alcohol? So yeah. like it's when you say hot, so like if you think about a shot of vodka, that's hot. Mm -hmm. If you think about a lemon lime and bitters, that's cold. So mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle, you've got an Italian red. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Spot on. I love that. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think it's Italian. I, I, I think it probably like the spiciness could also lead us to somewhere like Spain. It is quite yeah, spicy. Exactly. Where, where they do have a lot of wines that are spicy like this. They have Pinot Noir that can be quite spicy and grippy and racy, or it could be Tempranillo and or great Grenache. And fruit concentration yeah. as well, which could be Spain. So there's a few, that, those would be the options <laughs> that I would have been 
happy to be given. Okay. So what are our options? What, what are our options, options? Lockie? So this is what happens: was the 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 game show host generally gives us three options to choose from. What do we got? France, Spain, Spain. Italy. Well, <laughs> so we now we're well on team. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lock in Italy. Yeah, I'm gonna lock in Italy too. I'm gonna go Spain. Ooh, she. What's she done? It's French, isn't it? What is it? Oh, she's it's done it! Spanish. She's yeah. gone Spanish. Yeah. Oh Unbelievably, my the Somme has beaten the other two people at Blind Wine Day. Oh, so man, we've I've got a Spanish wine. Man, I thought this was going to be like um, Barolo. I thought it was going to be Piemonte. I thought nah. it was going to be someone like that. Wow. I, d I didn't see Italy. I didn't see Northern Italy. And I think for me, as soon as you said we were really you know, fixating on that spice component, mm. I was like, no, you're right. It's like that concentration, the spice, it's got a bit of acidity, but it doesn't look overly savoury. It's a bit more jammy. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. So we're in Spain. So what regions can we do? Yeah, this, do this must have been tough for you, Lucky. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so the wine regions are La Mancha, Rioja, La yep. and Catalonia. Catalonia, yep, for sure. Cool. Yeah. So La Mancha. So one, actually the one of the largest grape growing regions in Spain and also one of the oldest. Key varieties are Monastro, which is also known as Muvedra or Mataro. Um, also Graciano or Babal. 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 Okay. Oh, awesome yeah. varieties. And then Rioja is known for Tempranillo, kind of the home of Tempranillo in Spain. Um, and then... Yeah, they uh, so Rioja makes a lot of high quality Tempranillo, some Grenache and some Pinot as well. Um, but then also uh, Catalunya is mostly like bulk sparkling wine production, but Cava. they... Carver, yes. Thank you. Um, but they also have an increasing like quality of Grenache, which is quite it's quite Mediterranean, quite by the coast, really hot. So you can actually get really good Grenache. So basically it's like trying to identify the climate that this comes from. Do you think it comes from somewhere that's super hot or is it super hot fire? Or is it somewhere that's a little bit cooler? And maybe we should also say where they are. So Rioja has in the north, quite close to France. Catalonia is yeah, Mediterranean. And then La Mancha is central, so quite Warm. Yeah, cl close to the closer to the equator, south of Madrid. I think that based on the fact that this has a bit of spice in it, it's coming from a warmer climate. Mm -hmm. So, meaning that it's probably a little bit more like northern hemisphere. So, s south south of Spain is warmer than yep. the north of Spain. Yeah, yep. cool. Yeah, I, I agree with. You. I think it is La Mancha. I don't think this is Tempranillo. And oh. I. I, I have a feeling it could be from Rioja. I think it's just like, it's. I feel it was really well tailored enough to be from a, like a high altitude cool region. It could definitely be in, be something like a like a really well made Grenache or mm. um, one Australia or something like that. I think this is a really awesome wine. So I think that's where it, it is awesome. comes from. All right, yeah. so give me what the most Southern region, which is the most Southern. La Mancha. La Mancha. I'll take La Mancha. La Mancha, I'm taking Rioja. I'm gonna go in on La Mancha. Where do we go? Where are we going, Lock? Rioja. Uh, oh, yes. Nailed it. Bugger. Yeah, boy. Um, so that is the middle of the three yep. in terms of north, south. It's the most northern. It's the yep. most northern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the coldest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, so it still gets quite warm, but it, it also drop the temperature drops a lot at night. So basically you're able to retain a lot of acidity and not get all this like really flabby um, like ripe fruit characters, so it's really well balanced. Okay, so we're drinking a old world Spanish wine from Rioja. Rioja, yeah. Uh, what is, is awesome. the next question that we need to ask? What grape? What grape variety it is? Ooh. So is it? So I'm, I'm assuming it'll be Chardonnay. What? Rosé. Is it rosé? It might be rosé. <laughs> it's a sick rosé. <laughs> yeah. It's Alicante yeah. Boucher. Have you ever put <laughs> corn flour into a rosé? Corn oh, flour into no. a rosé before. <laughs> Um, what are we dealing with here? So, what are the what three are varieties options? we got? Lucky Tempranillo, yep. Ganache, yeah. Grenache. So, Ganache, which is Grenache, yep. Yeah. Viora, yep. Yeah. Cool. So, we're Super dealing niche. with Tempranillo, Grenache, or Viora. Yeah. Super niche variety. So, Fuck. what variety do we think is it going to be? Tempranillo, Grenache, or Viora? Viora. I like. If I haven't it's, had much. I Viora. haven't had any Viora, yeah. so that's like super left of center. I'm going to say definitively that of all the Vioras I've had, this. <laughs> No, it's not. It's just not. Like, I'm sorry. Viora just doesn't taste like this. Uh, I'm going to go with Grenache. It feels Grenache-y. It's, it's got alcohol. The acid's still there just before it drops away. And the um, the uh, oak integration is really, really good. That's my guess. I think it's Tempranillo. Because Noah supports the Bulldogs and I don't like him. <laughs> 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 no, because also I uh, quite often when I'm on a wine tour in the hills, I'll drink Tempranillo. 
Um, and this sort of tastes like the sort of things I'm expecting to drink. Grenache to me sounds like uh, something that someone with the um, what are the patches that professors have? What are they? Oh, tweed. Like tweed patches. patches. The tweed yeah, this doesn't, the, feel, yeah, yeah, this yeah. doesn't feel tweedy enough. I think it's a tempranillo. I think yeah. this one wears its hat backwards. I think this doesn't have enough structure to be a tempranillo. I think the Grenache is a really good call. I think the other thing as well is that it's quite well rounded and it's not like a, for me this is like a bigger medium bodied red. Yeah, fair. It's not sitting in that like lower, mm -hmm. like that lower edge, lower spectrum mm -hmm. of like being a full bodied wine. Um, and it is really well integrated. I think the other thing is Tempranillo, I feel like would just have a little bit more spice mm. in, or tannin and it's lacking More tannin that. for sure. Yeah. Um, what is it? Lucky, what do we got? <laughs> got all three of them in there. So you it's tricked us. Blend. You tricked us. So it's actually a field blend, a blend. of all three uh, varieties. Rat dog. You bloody rat dog. I'm not sure about that so because I'm correct. very confident that Veyron wasn't in there. <laughs> Viora it was yeah, not sorry. in there. Veyron, my, everyone's <laughs> favorite <laughs> transformer. Oh my days. All right, so now we're we're really almost down the edge of the funnel here. The only thing we really have to talk about now is how old it is. So what vintage do you think it is? Off the bat, with the color, I think it's got a little bit of age on it. The other thing to think about as well, because it's coming from a wine region, is that there are certain rules for out of Rioja when they can release certain wines. So we know that this is not particularly young wine, they wouldn't release a wine after only being out for a year. So my instant gut reaction is 2019. I was going to go 17. I am feeling 18. Well, I feel like a goose. Lucky, what is it? Oh, I was close. 2016 close, yeah. is it's good. younger than what we thought. Great. Yeah. Older than what it's we thought. Great. 2016 yeah. was a great year. <laughs> Stop. For <laughs> Spanish wines from the north. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Can we find out what this wine is actually, please? Yeah, what's the wine? Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Rioja. Bajera? I of don't know. Of course. Yeah, of course. Mm. I have absolutely no idea. All day. We know it's a Tempranillo, Vallura, and Grenache. Brand. But this is this is great. Uh, this would set you back uh, $135. Um, wow. Which is a, a pretty penny. Um, luckily, we bought this a couple of weeks ago from when we did the live stream, and we had it kicking around. Uh, and it is probably worth that money. To be honest. I, I think it is. It's a beautiful one. Delicious. Yum. Now, how confident are you feeling about playing against us? I've learned everything you possibly can. You've, get, you've, <laughs> you've mastered the game. Right. You've nailed it. Yeah, yeah, All right, let's put let's let's put you to the test. Ooh. I reckon it's what. <laughs> What we're going to do now is we're going to put Henry to the test with his blind tasting skills. We've chosen a wine that we feel like he's got adequate experience to be able to, to guess this. It's a white. He's done it. He's done he's it again. He's just gone and done it again. <laughs> it's amazing how different they sound. <laughs> <laughs> he's just mm, gone yeah, and done it like again. That. Alrighty. Now, uh, here's a fun one. New world or old world? I'm going to go new world. Uh, I think that it's got this sort of when I think of Old World, I think of uh, kings, queens, empires. When I think of New World, I think of people making grape juice. And this kind of tastes like grape juice. I know that, that they aren't like perfectly aligned like grape juice over here and the Queen of England over here. But there's a certain meeting point and this is on that right hand side of it. I, I don't know. I just think it doesn't really taste like old money. <laughs> tastes like that new money. <laughs> tastes like that new money. It's crypto. Right. I get that. Now... <laughs> I also think it is, I know what it is, granted, but I think for me, um, to add maybe more weight to what you're saying, because I you. think that it, <laughs> it could be used. it's quite um, fruit forward and it actually lacks, doesn't lack acidity, but if this was old world, I'd want to see more acidity. That makes sense. Yeah, it yeah. is quite a, um, uh, like an alcoholic juice box almost to us. Like, uh, yeah, I know, I I know what you mean. I use these as compliments and people are like, how dare you? I'm like, I know, I know, no, no, I know, no, I know exactly I know what, what you mean. mean. Well, I know yeah. exactly what you mean. You're it's on the really money. It's really concentrated. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, is it New World? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Now, here comes fun. Is this from South Africa? Is this from Australia, mate? Or is this across the ditch from New Zealand? 
I really like that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you You're like waiting for me to come back. <laughs> I was like, say it. <laughs> it is quite interesting to hear someone have to differentiate between South African and New Zealand. New Zealand, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try it. Um, I think it's Australian. Uh, the reason I think it's Australian is that I've drunk a lot more Australian wines than New Zealand or South African. Mm -hmm because I'm from Australia and I've got more access to it. And this feels quite familiar. This does awesome. feel like a wine that I would have drunk before. That doesn't mean I'm right, but- But you are. Mm. But you are. Good sir, you you'll are. You'll learn, you'll learn. You're getting it, you're mm. absolutely, he's getting it. You're, you're getting it. He's getting it, I'm really scared. You're correct. Now. I'm really scared. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna take my job soon. <laughs> um, regions. Regions. Oh, regions. Yeah, is this from uh, Margaret River in Western Australia? Yep. It's kind of like a hot, hot region, but it's got like a cool breeze that kind of chills everything out. Appreciate it. Is this uh, from the Adelaide Hills? You should be familiar with what the Adelaide Hills are like. Almost too familiar. <laughs> um, and the Clarence Vale. The Vale, yeah. So it's uh, similar to Margaret River, but a little bit more constantly warm. Mm. Not, doesn't get as hot. It doesn't get as cold. Doesn't get as cold. Don't think it's the Adelaide Hills. Hmm. Um, Which is because I don't know. Typically, the Adelaide Hills is cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The result of cold is the opposite of uh, you don't. My understanding is like if you've got a warm climate, you get something that's a little yeah. bit like hotter or mm -hmm. like spicier, which sounds really obvious because cold, cold, hot, hot. But yeah. like I can really understand. I understand. Like, yeah, you're looking for like there's a, a bit of fruit weight here, which you don't. Generally there's seen a, in yeah, cool a, climate it, wines. It, it, it sort of it, it sort of grabs you a little bit more. Yeah. So now you're looking at McLaren Vale versus Margaret River. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And obviously, a man of my own expertise, I can differentiate the two very specifically. <laughs> what I'm thinking is that this is probably from the McLaren Vale. The reason I'm saying that is that it feels like someone that you've met on the first leg of their European tour and they haven't travelled as far. We're quite far <laughs> from Western Australia right now. <laughs> and you amazing. might say, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, and no, I might say to you, it does. kind of It really point. does. <laughs> it really does. So where, where's it from? LA so, Hills. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, think, I, I think this wine is a confusing one because I think, um, interestingly, the variety is leading you down a, a different path than the one you should be going down. Unfortunate. It's uh, This variety is more commonly planted in McLaren Vale than it is in the Adelaide Hills. Just for anyone thinking they picked an easy one for me. No. Nah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we're in the Adelaide Hills. We're in the All Adelaide Hills. Yeah. Yeah. Where but I you, work in a winery yeah. and couldn't <laughs> identify that it's from there. Anyway, yes. fantastic. <laughs> now, uh, so the varieties. So let's go with the, an absolute staple of the Adelaide Hills and an absolute favourite of yours, mm. Chardonnay. Uh, well, let's go. Stay faithful to Unico Zello. Is this a Fiano? Is this Amanda? What is it? <laughs> Gruner Valina. Feels like not a Gruner Valina. Oh, I'll tell you <laughs> what. Gruner Valina. <laughs> I mean, look, if it is that, you played an incredible acting well, game. No, what I know about Chardonnay is that I think every white wine is Chardonnay. It <laughs> kind of smells like Chardonnay. It's got a little bit of that, like. Mm. It's got a little bit of that uh, warm wood to it. Mm -hmm. um, it tastes like Chardonnay It too. does taste like Chardonnay. It's quite leasy. It's like ready. Yeah. Uh, what was the second one you gave me? Fiano. Fiano. I don't think it's Fiano. Fiano is a little bit in my extremely limited experience. Um, but it's Unico Zella, so it's not that limited. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost a little bit more uh, tingly, like a little bit more- Higher acid? Uh, yeah, yep. like a little mm -hmm. bit more- There is a bit of minerality in this wine though. Mm -hmm count to your point okay. yeah no, um, there's minerality <laughs> i'm just i'm not going to entertain the thought that it's the third one like you've ruined it if but it's the third it's one a, you fucks me <laughs> <laughs> if yeah if i go if it's the third one then i'm the greatest poker yeah. player you've ever seen yeah, also, but we're not playing poker <laughs> but to play devil's advocate it could be grunex because it is a little bit oily on the mid palette and it's got that spiciness. It's got that white Oily on the mid palate. And also, it's not really giving that much on the nose, which we kind of found mm -hmm. that with the last Gruner we tried recently. Not okay. too long ago. I <laughs> am going to stay true to brand and say that this is an Adelaide Hills Cardinet. It's Fiano. This is Fiano. 
Is this Fiano? <laughs> is this you, Nico Zello? No, no, it's oh not. My no, God. It's not. <laughs> Everyone who the comes hug. up to the cell door is just like, I don't believe this you. Fucking idiot. <laughs> fucking guy. Oh, uh, your heart restarted beating, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Notes of fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, cool. So, this is Adelaide Hills Fiano. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, that was the only thing I was confident that it wasn't. I, I know. Well, good news, guys. I'm still the everyman. Uh, <laughs> how the mighty have fallen. How the mighty have fallen. Uh, what's next? Have we got anything? That's it. We can do I vintage. We can do, vin- we can can do vintage. vintage. Is this yep. 2020, 2018 or 2016? Oh, look. I don't think it's 2016 because surely it wouldn't be that pure and mm. color, mm-hmm. like colorless I, I, in the glass. Every star would have started turning a bit golden at that point. Yeah, yeah. 2018 or 2020, you yep. said? It's one of them. Uh, I'm going to go with 2020 because how long do you keep yep. a nice glass of Fiano around? Very true. This is actually 2018. Shit. Um, so <laughs> the, other, so, the other thing about 2020 was a really hot year. Yeah. Um, and obviously bush the bushfires. Fires. Yeah. yeah. So 2018 yeah. was also a pretty hot year yeah, as well. So the chalking, um, you know. It's really hard to differentiate. Chalk and cheese. But yeah, I think the main thing is that you were thinking about the uh, the tingly acidity of Fiano before from yeah. your rec- your memory. Mm. This is kind of, it started to drop away as the wine has started to age. So, so an older Fiano is not going to have that sharp note. No, um, but most, most wines at that point start, like every wine will start to drop the acidity. So it won't be as acidic as it starts to age. So if you were to put yourself in the shoes of a teacher, I'm not getting an A. <laughs> Am I getting an F? No, you're definitely no, getting an F. I actually think B plus. I'm gonna go straight B. Right, B. I was hoping for a C minus, so that's <laughs> one. I'll give you a use. B. I'd give you an absolute B. Um, we'll do this again sometime. We'll see if I improve my tasting notes. Uh, what was the wine that we actually had there? Though? Well, Lockie, do you mind chugging us the wine? That was that was perfect. That actually did go that, very nice. That was a very nice slide. That's take one. As How well. good is this bar for that? Jeez. Um, but this is uh, <laughs> Sam Scott's. Uh, his wine brand is called Leprobe. He makes some awesome uh, Fiano and a, a lot of Italian varieties in the Adelaide Hills. And this is bloody tasty. Yum. Really, really yummy.